everyone a very good evening morning and afternoon to all who have joined us today it's a saturday and here we are again with another workshop so uh, about this workshop i got i want to give you a quick glimpse uh, there comes a stage in everybody everybody's life especially a designer where you have learned the skills gained the experience but now you don't know how to move ahead the answer would be do not move just pause for a while as it is the time to flaunt your skills and work and once you are done with it the next opportunity will show up at your door like by itself so today's workshop is all about building your personal brand and we just got the right person to do that ron mishra the founder at design sundays which is a community of ux designers he has led design for various startups in the product market fit fit and grow journey he has 8 plus years of experience in building excellent products and some of his most noticeable work is zomato and urban company who people who do not know about zomato and urban company they are some leading startups in india right now and over the last 3 years he has built a great personal brand around ux design so what's the wait for let's start rohan the stage is all yours thank you thank you rashika so i am super excited for this session because this is something that i have learned uh, over last 3 years and i'm i'm super excited to just like you know share and when i was just creating some slides i was just thinking about how can how have i done it and when while i was doing it there was no guidebook there was no manual and i was just figuring it out like you know as uh, as as you know as i was going about it and earlier like you know when i started out i didn't even know what i'm building is a personal brand right so i hope to this like you know 45 minutes to an hour workshop i'll be able to answer a lot of like you know questions that people have in their mind a lot of things that they want to learn and obviously like you know it's it's not good enough if you reach at a certain stage and then you fall so how can you once you have built this personal brand how do you stay there right and it, it's very important right because right. we don't want to just like you know go to the top and then just like you know come crashing down so we'll we'll be talking about all this uh, let me get started let me start sharing my screen and uh, Okay, so let's get started. This is personal brand one hundred one for designers. I am super thrilled to share my journey with you. And before I do that, let let's get started and let's see, like you know, what do we have in store? So first, let let's answer a very big question about what is a personal brand? Why are we on this call and discussing like you know a topic such as personal brand? Like you know, and it's not something tangible. It's it's not something like your design that you can. literally show so why are we discussing about it we are we are going to discuss about that second is why do you need a personal brand like what are their benefits why are like you know so many people now jumping into content creation building a personal brand and and like you know you are spending your saturday with us right so we're trying to answer that next i'll share a five step process or rather five elements of building a personal brand if you get these five elements right your story will land and in the end like you know building a personal brand all of it comes down to telling the right stories to the right people and lastly we will discuss about like you know why do most personal brand after going well for a while it fails it all comes crashing down right and they are not able to sustain the brand over time right and you'll see that this happens to a lot of uh, creators a lot of brands also personal brands also and they just are not able to sustain the success they are not able to sustain the growth they are not able to sustain everything right and it has a lot of reason so we are going to discuss about that are you all ready are you all excited for this i want to see 47 yeses in the chat then we'll we'll get started are you all excited yes awesome okay thank you thank you so much for uh, keeping the energy uh, in the room right and uh, obviously just to like you know since i'm talking a lot about this room i'll show you i have literally an elephant in the room to address you don't believe me i'll show you see i have got an elephant in the room to address and i am going to address all the elephants here awesome that was just me okay 
Awesome. Let's get started. So, you know, um, before this, you you all might be wondering, like, you know, who is this guy talking about personal brand and what has he done? So let me give you a little bit about introduction about myself. It's just that it's not going to be a little bit. It's going to go for a while. So bear with me. My name is Mohan. I'm the founder of Design Sunday. Uh, I was an average engineer building all these like, you know, front end for a lot of web applications and things like that. And then I realized that this is not something that I enjoy doing. And also like, you know, it was kind of a need that the, there was a team that I was working with and we didn't have a designer, right? So it all started with me making things fancy. And from there, I have like, you know, literally built a career of eight plus years, like, you know, working with clients in India, US, Dubai, Indonesia, and I'm going to take you through it. Before this, I was leading uh, like, you know, international markets for urban company as a senior product designer for that team. Um, I designed things for Singapore, Dubai, K uh, Saudi Arabia, KSA, if you, if you guys know it, or USA and obviously India. So that's, that's my experience. Before that, at Zomato worked on some delicious products uh, like, you know, including subscription program, nutrition support, a lot of B2B, B2C side of things. I'd love to teach. I enjoy sharing whatever I know. I've, I've like, you know, uh, tried to help and, and be the mentor that I never got while I was entering into design and, and just trying to, like, you know, add a little bit value to the people that I get to mentor which has brought me to helping like you know thousands of people in in their design journey and all these people are not the images that you put in your uh, personas or proto personas or things like that these are real students working with some amazing brands in the world and creating amazing experiences every single day so also like you know i take a cohort where i teach those designers to build amazing stuff over 12 weeks. That is something that I do. And over time, I have built a following of almost like, you know, about to touch 18,000, like, you know, on, on LinkedIn. And I've done it from zero, like literally starting from zero, not also like, you know, facing all those challenges of what to share. What, what, do I have the content to share? Do I have the confidence? Do I have the right experience? Am I cut out for this? Um, does anybody care about this and also like you know who wants to read my content right and and obviously like you know uh who is going to follow me etc so i've i've been there being very inconsistent been consistent figured out along the way what works what doesn't and uh, yeah so that's how i build a following over uh like you know of over like i think combined it's over twenty five thousand um and and like you know and grown so all of the things that I have done with whether it be mentoring people, whether it be like, you know, um, helping students, whether it be building courses, building such amazing, uh, like, you know, clientele uh, portfolio. One thing that has really helped me is a personal brand. So here's my question to you. What is a personal brand? Anyone? my brand, what people see in me, okay? Okay, dairy at the rate scale, um, seems like a spam to me, but okay. To create a name which represents you, um, a personal brand that speaks about your business and you, my definition, okay? Good questions, okay. If I have to remove personal, if I ask you what is a brand, what what is going to be your answer? I'm just asking you, instead of asking like, you know, what is a personal brand? I'm asking you, what is a brand? What is a brand? How to introduce yourself in an attractive way that motivates others to try to get to know you more. Okay, brand is an identity, first of all, which stands out brand is uh, emotion, something known, 
customer's perspective towards the company, recognition of something, a name having value. That known by many brand is a feeling who creates value. I've heard it's what people say about you when you are not in the room. Okay, amazing. Okay, so think about this. So if I say Apple, right? Apple as a brand, not the apple that you eat, but the apple as a brand, right? As a company, what comes to your mind? What comes to your mind? Smartphone, marketing, minimalistic, sleek, familiar, sophisticated. What else? Apple. Great customer service, simple and smart, rich and expensive, strong. If I say this is iPhone, right? Uh, there is this Apple logo, right? What does this brand represent? What kind of emotions do you get? Trust, luxury, security, design, minimalistic. Okay. That, my friend, is a brand. Since they are not here to tell you that they stand for this design, security, and things like that, but over time they have kept a narrative that what they stand for, that's the brand. So let me go back to the thing. I hope you can see this. So here's Christo, one of like, you know, probably the biggest personal brands in the design industry. He has over 3,91,609 followers on LinkedIn. Okay. Okay. Amazing. Amazing, right? Like he has built it from zero, does amazing work in, in the design education side, right? Would you say this is his brand? Would you say this particular thing on LinkedIn is his brand? Okay, so this particular thing is not his brand. It's not his brand. It's one of the ways He's communicating with you. It's one of the ways he is showing the social proof of sort. But what when you if you have heard of him, if you haven't, like you know, think about someone you have heard of. It's about if he comes tomorrow and says that. Okay, let let me actually take it the other way. I've got a better example to explain it to you. Elon Musk. We all have heard of Elon Musk. He has 104.2 million followers on Twitter. Is Elon Musk a personal brand? He's a brand. He's a brand, guys. He's a brand. I'll show you how. And this is going to be a little bit controversial. So, like, you know, I just want you to focus on the main thing, not so much on the thing that I'm going to show you. Okay. So, I'm so sorry. What was that? Okay. Yeah. First, let's answer what is a personal brand. Okay. So it's an impression of who you are in the minds of the user, right? So just like you know, when I asked you about Apple, you said that you know it stands for simplicity, clean design, uh, like you know, sophistication and security and things like that, right? So it's a perception in your mind, right? They have they have said it so many times that now, whenever you think about Apple, you think about those things, right? Exactly, some uh, like you know what someone mentioned in the chat also. Your brand is what people say when you are not in the room, right? And this is, has been said by Jeff Bezos. If you guys know about him, he was the founder and CEO. He was, I think, the founder and uh, CEO of Amazon. Now he has stepped down. That's why he's not the CEO anymore. So he had said this that it's basically what people say when you are not in the room. When they have got the impression of you. They have consumed some bits of you. They have experienced some of your service. Now, what are they thinking about? Like, how, what is the impression in their mind? You have heard me for last, I don't know, uh, 20 minutes now, and you have some impression of me. If I'm not here, what will you think about me? That's my personal brand. If I stand for, if you think that I provide value and I have created something, amazing for you guys to learn from. You represent me as a good personal brand, a personal brand uh, for like, you know, learning personal brand, for example, in for designers, right? Let's take another example, right? 
I I hope you guys know who this person is. Uh, okay, Elon. Okay, so he's Elon Musk. Do you remember this particular event? Do you remember this particular event? So this is the launch of uh, Tesla Cybertruck. So they really like you know they actually created a prototype of it, which you can see in the background, and they just put it in front of people. Said that you can pre-order it today onwards. For just paying like hundred dollars, hundred dollars, which like you know um, would be roughly in today's days around eight thousand rupees, you can pre-order it and we'll deliver to you uh, in some time. Okay, right? Yes, for the people who know this, they know this. Okay, but why is this biggest like you know example of personal brand? Just why people then like you know back in the days, Tesla wasn't such big company. Tesla was still small. The Elon's personal brand that he has built over time by like you know developing uh, like you know the uh, from the exit of X dot com, which you know PayPal. Uh, and the uh, other things like he was doing SpaceX, he's built a personal brand around himself, right? And with that, here is what he was able to achieve. He's gotten 200,000 orders for Tesla. It's pre-order, guys. You have to pay, and for a very long time, you're not going to get anything. Right, so he has built this brand, and now he once he said he got on stage, he said, Okay, we are doing this. Just by hearing him say it, people said, Okay, like you know, we want to buy this, take my money. Right, that's what people said, and he was able to get 200,000 orders for his cyber truck. By the way, here is the thing. That order was taken in back in I think 2019. It's 2022. Not a single product has been delivered. I think the money got refunded or something, but not a single product has been delivered. But he was able just by the like you know putting his name to it, just going on the stage and talking about it. He was able to get two hundred thousand, right? Two hundred thousand pre-orders for it. Isn't that cool? Would you not like to have a brand where you just put your name and you sell hundreds, thousands, and like you know, lakhs of it? That's what personal brand does for you. Even if you are not there, they sell your products like crazy. They create amazing opportunities for you. I hope you guys know the power of personal brand by now. A little bit. Elon is a very extreme example of it. Like, you know, he has sold 200,000 of it. We probably will be happy if we sell 1,000. But do we know the power of personal brand by now? Yes or no? In the chat, please. Yeah, I mean, like, you know, uh, the Elon's personal brand is probably the biggest, like, you know, personal brand in the world. Tesla doesn't need marketing. Tesla doesn't need marketing campaigns at all because Elon puts his name to it. If you guys don't know, here's another crazy fact. He actually tweeted about Dogcoin and it went over the roof because, because people invested so much money into it. And obviously, like, you know, he's an extreme example of personal brand, but it's his, this person, it's his personal brand that has, like, you know, sold so many of these that has made Dogcoin successful and everything from there. Okay, so this is the power of personal brand. Now let's let's get a little like you know a little biased, little selfish here and understand like why do we need a personal brand, right? Like Elon wanted to make SpaceX successful. He wanted to get all these big contracts for like you know SpaceX. But why do we need a personal brand? Like as Rohan Mishra, why? Do I need a personal brand? Okay, so let's first understand the benefits of personal brand. So, for example, it can help you stand out from a crowd. So, like, you know, someone in the chat did ask me, right, like in the beginning, that, you know, like, why does someone hire me over any other designer who is just as good? Okay, so here's the thing, my friend. Like, I'll 
I think I have that in the slide, so I'll rather go there and show it to you. You know, 70 to 80% of the jobs are never advertised. Like you will not find any job posting for it. it it's just not there. And most of these are happening either through referral or like, you know, through seeing someone being super good at it, right? And how are those things happening? How are, uh, like, you know, how can we make someone refer us even if we don't ask for it? It's just by like, you know, here is, uh, I think if you want to take anything out of it, these are like, you know, these next, this next sentence that you want to take. You want to own a few words in people's mind. If you can own, let's say that, you know, this is the best designer I know in my circle. So if they will get reached out to someone that, you know, we are looking for a designer, who are they going to refer? They're going to say, this is the best designer that I know. In the circle. So you don't have to own this thing, but you have to own that design, best designer belongs to you. So you have to own a few things in the mind of people. And how are you going to do that, right? You're going to do that by sharing your work, by sharing the story again and again. Right. So if you want to take anything from this, anything out of this, best opportunities, whether it be freelance client, whether it be job opportunity, everything, these are never advertised. They happen to referral or someone recommending someone for the position. Right. And for that, you have to be on top of the mind of the people. Right. And who can refer you, who can give you a referral, who can recommend you for a role. So first, it can help you stand out. So if two designers are just as good, a person who is writing his story, who is sharing the work that he has done for another client or in the past work, if he has put out some work, obviously, like, you know, I would want to go with that particular person who is more vocal about it, who can explain his ideas to other people, who can, like, you know, collaborate, who can communicate, right? Second is, it will help you stay on top of your mind. If you think about, I have put some examples on the right. I was hoping like there will be international audience. So um, if you see there is Oprah, there is Mr. Beast, Ankur for Indian audience, Raj for Indian audience. So if you think about Mr. Beast, right? He is a YouTuber. He's the biggest YouTuber on the planet, right? He literally started his own chocolate bar and burger brand with he opened 300 stores at a time and he was sold out they couldn't match the consumption they couldn't match the number of orders that's what brands do for you that's what personal brands do for you and this is true for all these people right if you think about let's say uh, Ankur or Raj, if they want to teach you something about time management, if they want to teach you about public speaking or something, you would want to go there. So you have to own that place in people's mind. And that's why, like, you know, if you think about it, what do people, what are designers sharing on LinkedIn? They're sharing the best book because they, they, uh, they are sharing the best resources because they want to help you. So the next time, whenever you are looking for a UX design resource, who do you go to? You'll go to this person. If he shares the thing and there is another person who shares the thing, who would you buy from? Who would you get that quote from? Who would you get that ebook from? It would be that person. So you can stay on top of mind, right? It can lead to opportunity, as I have told you. If you have got those things in the mind of the people, they are going to refer you. They are going to bring freelance opportunities to you. And you just have to be making sure that they remember you for the thing that you do. And you can always, here's the thing that someone told to me a while back. And I think it's two years back, I think. And it was this, that you have to always out uh, educate your customer. You don't have to win it. They have, you have to educate them and make them your fan. They, they should know that if even I have a problem, I can go to this person. And that's what you have to do. This will help your audience trust you more. It will help you niche down expertise and focus on one particular thing, whatever you want to be. If I want to stand for the, like, you know, UX design education in India, I can very well focus on that. And that 
like, you know, if I go back and I show you what does my first line says, it says UX design educator. And I'm not even kidding. Just by the, whenever I post a certain thing, I get three, four people requesting me, can I join your course? Do you have anything like, you know, where I can just learn from you? Can I get on a coaching call with you? And over time, when I have started putting it out, I'm just like written UX design educator. I don't mention it. Even if I don't mention it in the post, I still get leads for that because I have owned that. And the kind of content that I share over all my channels is a representation of what I want to be owning in their mind. It, it can also help you build authority. And over time, I have learned. I've run courses, guys, by the way. I've run uh, like, you know, very high value or high dollar courses. And I have done zero as a marketing. I've only done like, you know, whatever I can teach. And I have just built a personal brand around it. Everything is content for me. Okay. And that's what, that's what like, you know, I have been doing over time. Okay. So now we have understood the power of it, what all we can do it, whether it be job, getting freelance client, whether it be like, you know, building our own products, which is eBooks, courses, et cetera. We can sell all of those things through our personal brand, right? And obviously like it can mean better job opportunities, more clients for your business, freelance opportunities. You can sell your own products. And the opportunities are endless, right? Today also, if you don't know, if you don't know, and it's cool, if you don't know what you're going to be selling or what, how you are going to be using it, still make sure that you enter this thing and, and create a personal brand for yourself. You may never know. Tomorrow you might want to jump to a better company. Someone there might be consuming your content for a while. They might refer you. And actually, I'm not even kidding. Both the, like, you know, the opportunities that I mentioned, I've worked with more companies also, but the biggest two opportunities, the Mato and Urban Company, happened when, like, you know, uh, my personal brand, someone who used to consume my content, who used to follow my story, referred me in both the companies. In Zomato, it was a VP level person. In uh, Urban Company, it was a fellow designer who used to, like you know take my resources my content and he referred me those jobs were not open they were not put out on any portal not on any career page and still i was able to get it just because like you know i've, I've, I've helped them i have helped people in something and they remember me for it right so like you know rather than giving abc a referral he they gave me a referral and that's how i Okay, um, I will take you back. And I told you, like, not just true for, like, you know, 50% of jobs, 70 to 80% of the jobs are never advertised. They, nobody knows about it, right? So if you're thinking you will be able to apply it from somewhere, you will not. Only if you are in the minds of people, they are going to consider you for it. Okay, so now I'm going to talk about the five elements of building your personal brand. Are you guys with me? Are you guys still with me in the chat? Yes, no, in the chat. Are you guys still with me? Yes, Ari says yes. Aditya, yes. Purnima, yes. Vishal, yes. Brian, yes. Vishu, yes. Okay, uh, Sudhir, Albert. Thank you guys. Thank you so much for listening. I hope you understand why we are talking about this. Why is it such amazing potential? I'll tell you. So, like, you know, I get to, like, you know, talk to a lot of people. And since we have been in this time where content economy in boost, uh, like, you know, it's, it's, it's in full progress, right? Content economy is the next big thing. There are going to be so many creators who are going to just make like, you know, uh, their livelihood, their business, their money with creating content. I am sure that you with your job and everything can create up, like, you know, a brand 
where where that opportunities will come to you whether you like you know you will not be going after the company that i want the job they'll be like hey we have an opening if you are open for it and how great would that be right that's why you need to start creating a positioning for yourself where they know you for a certain thing they know you that you have been doing great job right so okay okay so five um, like you know elements to your personal brand right so let's discuss one by one first is uh, define who you are and what you stand for so this one uh, very well mean that uh, you have to be very clear about who you are for example i am a designer right and uh, i stand for very clean minimalistic design for example right so that's the identity i have to own everything that i do every communication that i send out every post that i write everything that i share i have seen people just by sharing others post on their instagram story they have built a brand over that right so you have to stand behind everything that you are putting out and it has to have your name second is you have to identify who is your target audience for example some people always are confused between should i share a resource for other designers or should i share my case study depends on who who is your target audience for example if you're looking for more client you might want to put out like you know more case studies right you more, might want to put out more of your work because like you know uh, if other people will see it they will see your work and they will like you know give uh, reach out to you for more work right that's how it is if you are looking for more designers to follow you or some junior designers to follow you and you are slightly senior as a designer you might want to put out some resources and similarly let's suppose if you want your first job first internship right so you want to put out like you know what you are learning how you are learning it what is the progress that you have made where you are learning from okay and what are you able to create from it right when you share those things um uh, th- then people are able to know about it but all it comes down is do you know who you are targeting because people at various times right can be targeting multiple of these people they can be targeting okay let me put a resource today a case study tomorrow uh, like you know a, like you know mentoring session tomorrow and that's the biggest flaw because they are not focused they are not attracting one kind of people to follow them they are like you know having all these different different kinds of people who are following them and that eventually leads to nothing right so be very conscious about who your target audience is and what you're sharing or what you're putting out how is it going to help them see you as uh, like you know someone who they can consider right for like you know some opportunity understand your strength and weakness some people might not be so good with camera and they might be super good with writing right so understand what is your weakness what is your strength and it can also be about the craft so i know a lot of people who are very good at visual design and not so much good at ux research and same is the case uh, the vice versa could be also be a case right so there could be a lot of designers who are very good at research not so good at uh, like you know um, visual design so you know that, that you know what your strength is what your weakness is and what you should be sharing what you should not be sharing right because that will not be a good thing like you know people might not remember you for that know who are you competing with so since you have a very good clarity about who you are who your target audience is what are your strengths then you also can figure out who your competitor competition are or who are the other people doing the similar kind of content that you are doing whether it be case study resources or something else right so know them and learn from them right because you you obviously want to like you know understand what they are doing right and what they are doing wrong right and everything comes down to your story your experience your work so do one thing okay do one thing i'm i'm going to tell you a uh, like working thing that you can do today and see how many people want to connect with you okay so write a post today which is just about hey my name is xyz i am new on linkedin or i have just started putting out content on linkedin or instagram or whatever you want to share 
I talk about or I share things about or I care about things like UX design, UX research, product design, connect with me if you want to have a chat. Just put it out there and see how many people just like, you know, engage with that content and also see how many leads or leads or potential leads that you generate from that. You will be surprised to know because since you have just made it very clear, hey, this is who I am. This is what I care about or this is what I can help you with. Let me know if I can help you. And that's just simply it. If you put it out, you are going to get much better leads. You are going to get much more potential leads. And just think about it doing over and over. Not just like in the same post, but over time, just share things, something about that you care about. Something else. You design something X, Y, Z. You will build your tribe. Because what is the community of your tribe? It's a, it's 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 a uh, let you know it's a group of people ca uh, caring about a similar thing or similar interest. That's what you're trying to do, right? So over time you build your community. So just do one small thing. Just take my uh, word for it. Just put out this post. Hey, my name is this. I am starting my journey on LinkedIn. I care about your design or whatever. Like you know your field of expertise is connect with me or let's talk or whatever. Let me know in the comments if I can help you in some way. You are going to generate leads. You are going to get better opportunity. People are going to remember you for whatever you care about. And trust me, I've seen hundreds of people do it. I One of my tweets on, uh, one of my Twitter tweets, I have just written it down and I was at, I'm not even kidding. I was at four, or 600 following, I gained around 1,200 followers just by doing this. And obviously, one more post was there, but like you know, if I still show you, I have just pinned it here. It's simple. I don't like you know, I don't preach uh, whatever, but here is what I have done. Like you know, um, I've just said, like, you know, I woke up with this. I tweet every day about this, that, and everything. I tweet about this. Let's connect. Exact same thing. And this is not something I'm telling you today. This is something I've done on February 5th. This is what I have done on February 5th. And I'm just telling you, do the same thing. You are going to put this thing in your mind of people. And here is the thing. Again, the same thing. I'm just reiterating whatever i do i help you learn ui ux design by sharing about these things yeah right and just by doing the same thing i have gained whatever like you know thing i have gained so far okay let's get back so very simply you can take a screenshot of this if you want five things know who you are what you care about Second is, who's your target audience? Are you looking for jobs? If yes, recruiters are your audience, then you might want to share your work, resume, whatever, right? What are your strengths and weakness? If you're not comfortable with certain style or certain mode, choose a different one. They are like, you know, audio, video, text, images, everything is out there. Everything is open for grabs. Just take the advantage. Know your competition, learn from them what they are doing right, what they are doing wrong, how can you improve on it. And obviously, like, you know, over time, you have to tell your story and you have to tell your story. Remember this, you are not going to come up with a lot of content every single day. Learn to tell the same story in five different ways. Learn to tell your same story. It could be like, you know, what you should do. Right. So, so one week it could be about what you should do next week the same thing what most people don't do right it's the same content what you should do and what most people don't do and just like you know by telling the same story five different times you work on your storytelling skills you have enough content to go on and that really helps okay a few things that most personal brand like you know over time fail it's 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 the easy success that's the killer i think the success that comes like you know with time with a stable growth is always good but the success that comes suddenly it's the killer so here are the things that i feel that most personal brand uh, don't do and that's why they fail 
Number one, they don't stay authentic. So, like you know, um, I read this very amazing quote today, and it's 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 so it says, "Today you are you. That is truer than true. There is no one alive who is youer than you." Okay, and this is like you know a person by the name of Doctor Seuss, and like you know if you think about it, you don't have to be anybody else. You are unique in your own ways. The way you have transitioned into design or started your journey in design, it's unique. My journey is unique, right? Obviously, like you know you can find so many engineers who have transitioned into design, but do you think like you know uh, anyone has lived? my life my journey it's not possible your journey is very unique to you so you don't have to be anybody else just be you share about your story your experiences what you are learning right and there are enough uh, experiences we all have that we can share with the rest of the world right so brands over time want to become someone else and that's the biggest thing that kill them second is uh, the same i think uh, you have to stay yourself and third would be they don't stay consistent so over time people replace your image or the keywords that you have generated in their mind with someone else's and it's 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 not natural right so nothing stays forever you have to keep working on it keep building it keep maintaining that brand in their mind to make sure that they remember you uh, next uh, like you know as i have told you they are confused with their audience they sometimes target the students they sometimes target the designers that are entering the field sometimes they want the lead so you can't have it all so you have to focus you have to make sure that you niche down on to like you know one particular audience that you want to have for your particular goal whether it be pro- selling products generating leads getting a better opportunity working with like you know a particular company you have to be really really focused and the last thing focusing too much on your competitors so there was this amazing thing that someone said that if you keep focusing on your like if you keep focusing too much on your competitors back you are going to come out looking like their asses okay so let me come out and say this so if you focus too much on your competitor you'll come out looking like their asses okay and you don't want that right so don't focus too much on the competitors and with that i think that was all from my side you can connect with me over instagram uh, linkedin and twitter i've taken good i think uh, 50 minutes and open to any questions if you might have uh rashika sorry if i did go over time i'm so sorry for that no 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 and i think this was required and you are not over time you are just in time and um, thank awesome. you i think it was a very very great presentation and even i learned uh, so much about it uh, especially the part like everyone sees uh, you know we read about elon musk we read his tweets we know the influence he has but noticing it from a different angle right and bringing in facts like okay they do not spend money on marketing and still is the richest person one among the richest person in the world so i think that that's great so i think it's time to bring in some questions we already have in the q and a section uh It's from Xavier. What is necessary to get an internship or a job in UX UI design when you have switched your career? Okay, awesome. Um, so when you have just switched your career, uh, I mean, so today I was talking to someone and uh, she booked a mentoring session with me, and she was like, "I've been a networking engineer for seven years now." i've like you know i've got uh, developed this uh, interest in ux design for last two years work with a client and created something now i want to transition my uh, like you know a uh, transition my role full time into product design or ux design and uh, i want to go for a senior role so you here is what you have to uh, here is like you know here's what you have to always remember whenever you transition from one particular field to another you have to go to the square one and 
you have to start from there right so yeah, if you are literally starting out you need to build some um, concept case studies as we call it right where you're trying to solve a problem around you it's not related to a company so that like you know uh, companies give you like you know a chance by looking at your concept work because concept works are just about you're solving a problem from around you by using the skills that you develop as a designer and just like you know if you're going for an internship it's slightly easy because right that, at that point they are seeing that okay this person wants to learn so he has the intent uh, he has worked a little bit on it on his own so like you know they are developing a sense of trust in you and they can literally give you that chance so uh, like you know learn some skills so three particular skills that comes to my mind one is learn uh, visual design skills which you can take a few courses i think on pro app also and and there are a lot of other resources as well um and do this activity that i call copy work so it's basically like taking a design and just copying it pixel by pixel while you're doing that just question why the designer the original designer took the like you know took this decision why is this red color white color this size that size and everything and over time you will develop a sense of it you will develop a taste around colors typography etc as well and uh, that that would be first step just a note there that don't share this as your original design on any of the dribbles or linkedins of the world uh, that's just like not right uh second thing would that you would want to learn is uh product thinking skills which can uh, easily be developed by asking a lot of questions uh, and going deeper into why this problem exists in the first place who are the users why are they facing this problem what are the shortcuts they have developed and things like that and third would be communication skills so while you're doing this concept project just collaborate with one more designer or if someone in your network is looking for a designer to help them with the project just help them right help them build that project and so in the process you will learn the collaboration and communication skills I, and i think if you have got the basics of these of these three skills in place uh, it's much easier for you to actually get an internship or a job i hope okay. that answers your question i think yes but i have a follow up question or i think a conversation on that so we recently sure. had a workshop uh, with alipta i think he's a designer with uh, microsoft two two three weeks yes. back so he yes. i i think you know him right so uh, yeah, I do. Uh, okay so he had a, a very interesting conversation that it's let's not focus on building concept project projects when it comes to you know building your portfolios uh, so like because what are your thoughts on this because his uh, point was that you don't know the you know the challenges the designer had at that time was it budget issue Understood. and right. and i think we i and alipta had a conversation on actually debate on this okay so let's not call it conversation let's <laughs> call what it is what it is i'll tell you so what he he think is not wrong okay uh, and why is that because if you have got like you know some experience in design i want to see what are the hurdles because it's not a smooth journey of you know you figured out the problem and now you have created a solution and it just works right it's always a journey you have created a solution and that's where the journey starts because now you have to convince the stakeholders you have to figure out if this solution works there are hundreds of things so alipta has this uh, like you know uh, point over there that since the designer did not go through all this i'm not able to judge the, like you know the aspects of his design whereas i agree with that but for slightly senior designers right if you are just starting out your career nobody so here is like you know something i shared on twitter today itself and it says uh there is this chicken egg problem in design okay or like you know entering in design which which is very simple if you don't have the experience people are not going to give you the job and if you are not uh, getting the job you are not going to have the experience like it's as simple as it is right so my thought is obviously if you are working in a company you are slightly senior as a designer you have got some experience it's better to show a live project any day any day even if you have created something small but most people are not going to get that opportunity unless they work on some concept projects which right. is easier to start 
which uh, helps them learn some skills. And I'm not just saying it for the sake of saying it. I have hundreds of students who I have just suggested, like, you know, build concept projects. They have built it. They have got amazing offers as well. Okay. A few people on the slide where I showed you and said that this is not, like, you know, persona pictures. Most of them started with concept projects now working with amazing companies and that's how it is right you're building your skill you are just getting the lay of the land you are understanding what you have to do and uh, sometimes when you are not designing or learning in a learner's mode it can cause a lot of pain and trouble to you so might as well learn there and eventually like you know you can work with companies and solve real problems right no problem and i think it's that. very even difficult if you are especially switching your career right so yeah. when you make a career switch i think concept projects is something that completely you know validates it helps you at least explore what all horizons are there what are other peripheries are there like and what you can yeah. do and what you cannot do right uh, yeah it may or may not help you get a job but it will definitely because uh, i mean so think about it so if you are if you come to me as a designer and say that hey Rohan, I am interested in UX design and I want, I have done some work or say like, you know, I want to get in design. The first question that I'm going to ask you, have you tried something? Like, have you made something? Have you figured out some problem and everything? And that person does not have a real project, right? So he's not stepping or like, you know, they are not stepping in design any which way. So this right. just helps you learn the skills and get that first opportunity where you can actually work on some real projects cool i think let's move to the next one uh, as a fresher one might underestimate or overestimate one's strengths and weaknesses just because they don't have enough exposure working in the industry how do you suggest we tackle it so i think uh, like you know one's strengths and weakness it's 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 a it's a very good question to ask because like, you know, we as designers have this thing called imposter syndrome. A lot of times we know something, but just because like, you know, um, like, you know, we, I mean, there is no this uh, thing that, oh, I know this and suddenly you will go again in this, like, you know, downfall. Oh, I don't know anything, right? And um, trust me, this happens to me till date as well. Uh, the only reason and the only thing that keeps me going is that is there like you know can i emit like you know can i uh get the results again for example if i'm planning to do something and i did it once i might feel oh i still don't know it it might happen by chance but if i'm still be able to produce it again i just like you know understand that oh i can do it and same is the uh, thing with strength and weakness uh, if i'm standing in front of you and you ask me things about ux research i'm failing i know i, I lack there right so there are two things. One is like, you know, acquired, one is inherited, right? Inherited are the things that you probably can't change. So something, someone might have a uh, condition called camera consciousness or like, you know, uh, there is this, I'm forgetting the name of the disease because you are not able to hold your attention span for too long, right? So okay. that, so you'll probably not do as well as a UX research. Unless it's that you can learn things and uh, like, you know, over time you have to like you know develop a gut of doing it most of the things that you think you can't do let me tell you you can and coming from my personal experience i never thought like you know um the first time i ever stood in front of an audience i got fever i kid you not i never thought for the like you know um for my life that i'll ever be able to face an audience and talk to them and i am the same person who has uh, like you know in front of 1900 people given a live talk uh, so I mean that's the difference you can work on it and eventually get over it it's like you know most of the uh, weaknesses can be converted in strengths very easily uh, you just have to know it you are not good at it yet right, right. and that's the only thing I think all engineers have some sort of stage fear. I also went through that phase. And yeah. somehow, uh, I think I've been conducting these workshops for one year. When I like took the first one, 
I yeah. was so nervous, and in fact, it was with someone whom I knew. Then also, I was like, "Shit, what will happen?" Because I, by profession, is not a designer. I also yeah. switch my career to you know UX writing, then content writing, and then marketing and everything, and learning about design. So, but I think once you have taken that step, you never look back. That's the yeah. It gets easier. It like, gets easier. It gets easier. Cool. Okay. How do you think HCI will change after arrival of metaverse? Um. Okay. So, right now it's a long shot. Uh. And why I say long shot because everyone wants to work on metaverse. Everyone wants to work on blockchain. Everyone wants to work on Web three. And like you know, obviously it's it's going to change a few things, but the basic. uh principles of human computer interactions are going to remain the same uh the only reason is it's like you know thinking about the reality right like we are changing the mode to interacting with the computer but we are not really like you know uh changing the principles as such so it's just like you know uh, if you think about it how do you actually interact with a metaverse you need to have that oculus and kind of things for now right like and it's changing the mode it's not changing the principles as such so um i don't know like i might be might not be able to see that far in the future but uh, like you know as far as the designer in me says that it it is not going to change something significantly for at least next 3 to 4 years 5 years is a long time so i don't know <laughs> i right okay whenever i make a minimalistic app design some of the client called the design monotonous how to handle these situations oh i've been there i've been there i've i've stood in front of uh, a client and this is like you know probably 5 years ago and we created this design of this dashboard and like you know there were only like you know these boxes with the data and there were cta's just colored on the screen and everything and that person in front of us this looks very much like a sketch when are we going to see the final design and we just explained to him this is the final design and everything and and then uh, back that time right there was uh, so he he actually opened this app called <clears throat> i'm so sorry uh, astro yogi or something where there were these wheels of like you know with all your um, like you know sign oh, horoscopes a horoscopic signs and everything was there and it was all yellow and with black icons and everything i want this like i want <laughs> the app to be like this and everything and like you know it took us forever to explain to him that you know this is different and how it's different and everything uh, over time what i have learned is that if you just ask them that what do they mean by this sketch or monotonous design they will explain to you that right now it's all boxes and everything and uh, that's where one aspect of ux design comes in place which is desirability so what they're essentially saying to you in most conversation i'm not saying all but most conversation is it doesn't feel desirable for me to use it right uh, and and for that you can actually add some illustration you can add some uh, like you know icons etc so if you think about it um what they're saying to you is make it more desirable that people would want to use it people would want to interact with it and that that's what you have to solve for so suddenly now that i have said it now it's a slightly easier problem for you to understand as a designer right sometimes it's just about the like you know understanding that conversation so the client is talking in a way of a layman because he obviously don't understand the like you know design jargons or the designer things as you might put it just have to understand and how you understand this ask so i ask those questions and uh, like you know after a while it was so obvious to me that i might not agree with it but i understood that what he's saying is the the desirability is lacking quite a bit and that's what like you know uh, i had to improve and that suddenly became an easier task for me rather than then like you know adding all yellows and blacks and stuff so that's what probably you have to also do yeah i think like we all go through changes in our life at every stage design also went through it and it took a lot of time for people to understand and till yeah. now they don't 
understand our point that a minimalistic design takes more time because the thought process that goes behind uh, you know the creativity that is there that is much more than you know something put flashy together and just put two cards and okay i want this yellow and black yeah, uh, yeah. it's happening but slowly and gradually and even after covid now people have actually understood the importance you know how to stand apart is uh what they're looking for now they are like investing more and more into design and i think that's why our industry is booming and the community yeah. is booming. yeah okay recruiters often mix up graphic and ux ui design uh, i mean i mean i'll i'll I, i don't know which country you are from so i'll <laughs> actually i think you are from mumbai i read it when you were answering where are you from so uh i mean if you are in india here is a simple okay here's a th- simple three words tip for you find better company <laughs> find better company because there are a lot of companies now like you know they have started to understood uh, understand the like you know a difference between graphics and ui ux and uh, here's a very good part about it uh so if, like you know a lot of companies make ux for ui and ui for ux and use them interchangeably and things like that but graphics and ux people have started to realize the difference and since they have now there are more opportunities so instead of there are different levels where people are so people are aware people are educated and things like that right now you are dealing with an audience which is probably not aware so might as well move to the next level the people who are aware they know what value you bring how you are different from a graphic designer and here's a bad thing even if you work with that graphic design versus you are you even never realize the value you bring to the table you never be paid uh, like you know like a ux designer because you bring more value right so might as well just move on to a better company that would be my suggestion the only good suggestion okay can we become a product manager by having ux design skills as a founder could you tell us how the process of having a product balancing between the design and business aspect thank you okay so yes you can become a very good product manager by having the ux skills because um back in the i don't remember so i'm going to paraphrase it so back in the time when i was working in zomato there was this vp i have was having a conversation with and we were planning to hire a pm and i was interviewing for it so he explained it to me like this so a product managers uh, like you know function depends on five things okay one is customer obsession second is the tech architecture third is data analysis fourth is ux design and fifth i don't remember so that's why i was paraphrasing because i don't remember the fifth one but it's the five things that you can like you know uh, that makes you a product manager so having a ux skill actually makes you better one because you start like you know customer obsession and then the like you know ux understanding comes to you naturally right so that's two out of five box tick right there so it's it's not a broker and uh actually i think the fifth one must be a business standpoint or a stakeholder standpoint so um like you know that's what we do and uh, over time it, as wrong as it might sound i've since i've uh, moved to more of a managerial role in last two to three years uh it's difficult to like you know do that but uh in the end stop obsessing over every single thing because it's the teammates job to do it my job is to make sure that uh, like you know we build something that our customer value and we are able to create business off it so like you know i, I i'm not um, like you know that will eventually work out that could be something yeah cool how much time might it take it might take to build a personal brand or does it keep evolving over time like evolving oh uh, so okay i'll give you an answer that will probably take you away from it but unless you are willing to spend 700 days which essentially is 2 years 
uh, building a personal brand might not help you. Obviously, you will be able to see uh, a lot of value coming out of it just after 30 days or 45 days of it. But like, if you truly want to build a personal brand where you see, uh, where you actually reap benefits 10x, 15x, 20x, 30x, then it is going to take at least two years. Uh, one small thing is that you can't just stop after that. Obviously, like, you know, as I have told you there, that one of the things that, like, you know, people mistake is they eventually stop and they are not consistent with it. So if you're okay, like, you know, not reaping more benefits later, it's okay to stop, right? It's um, We all go through sometimes and it's not possible to manage it. But uh, if you want to get that 10, 15 X benefits, two years, 700 days, absolutely. I'm doing UX design for a year. Can I also learn front-end development? Will it be good for me? The answer is no. And uh, I'll like, you know, UX design as a field, it's so uh, vast that you can't possibly learn all of it as like, you know, just a person who is just practicing UX design. So don't like, you know, jump ships and go for front-end development or and all. I'm going to tell you something really bad. If you do feel like coding, if you do feel like going into front-end, consider if you want to switch careers completely, but like, you know, don't be a person with uh, like, you know, they're put in the two, two boats, right? This is not going to help you, right? So if you're trying to become one of the best UX designers, then your focus should be on UX design, right? Not learning front-end and all the things it's it's distracting right it seems like i want to do this that and everything it's the only when you niche down you're going to succeed in that one particular thing but uh somehow like if you are practicing ui design for you know quite a lot of time and designers tend to forget while building that okay this is something which is uh not easily achievable because i'm letting you know because we're building a new course which is around things designers should know about development the basic things so we okay. had a quick so survey. yes amazing thank you for bringing this there there is a course in uh like you know design that i think every designer should do which is uh business uh, sorry i think mba for designers or something it's called and i think everyone should do it not because they should learn the business but they should know how the business works. Similarly, I feel they should know how the technology works, the color they are choosing, how the developer is going to put it. But I should not be a person who is going to go and put those colors for them. Right. right? So there is a there is a difference between like you know me um like you know going and uh, doing the job and uh, me just like you know actually knowing that how it will be done right it's very important for you to know how it will be done but you don't have to actually go and do it so you should know that css will be used to put colors but like do i need to go and write the css code no no i mean yeah. and i think with tools like webflow like designers are even building their portfolios in webflow now <laughs> so that's i think that's a easier route to take rather than going and learning yeah you yeah. get the idea and you'll know okay this is how it is done and end of story you'll have a full picture yeah. of around the project yeah. i mean get the context of all the things that are like you know you have to collaborate with developers you have to collaborate with marketing and, and things like that you get a basic idea of how it works but you don't have to go and run a retention marketing campaign just because you are working with a marketing team right like that's absurd Okay, how many case studies or design projects do I need to do I need to do to get my first internship? Okay, so it's internship, so two to three. Okay, and here is the logic uh, why. So if you do one, it means that like you know you have you know the skill, but the results that you have achieved is uh, maybe one hit wonder. Like you might not be able to achieve it later. Once you do two or three case studies, it's significant proof that you know you have you're confident on the process, you know why you're doing what you're doing. And 
people look at it like this also that if one case study is really good and two are really bad then like you know your chances go away so i'll say two to three and these can very well be concept do two i think i have seen people get uh, like you know internships with one also but i think uh, a safer bet would be to do three concept projects uh, will be like you know counted as well that's okay because since you are going for internship any which way or uh, speak to alipta <laughs> about concept project <laughs> yeah <laughs> cool i think we are done with the questions uh if someone has any more question we still have two to two to three more minutes okay uh what is the best approach to take when you want to get into ux freelancing build a super solid uh, i think uh, number so i'll break it into three parts number one is build a super solid dribble because a lot of people who are still looking for designers hang out on dribble and behance uh, number two is um, like you know share your case study and talk about it and talk about it from a perspective of how do we help the client and uh, number three would be uh, like you know reach out to people who are like you know um who are so they, they essentially put postings so instead of just going and applying for the freelance posting on linkedin etc reach out to them personally you have a better chance of converting them right cool i think rohan we are done with the questions for today thank you for such an exciting workshop and helping all the creators and designers out there learn to build their unique presence in this digital world i think that's the entity which we are going to hold our virtual identity card is our brand presence i truly believe that and thank you so much and it was an amazing workshop people really enjoyed it thank you so much thank you so much for having me uh, rashika and the entire pro app team thank you so much for having me i really enjoyed it uh, it it was super helpful for me in the regards that i actually uh, had to go back down the memory lane and think about how i have come here and like you know how i have achieved the things i have and and like you know absolutely it was a pleasure coming here and i i think the audience was super interactive as well thank you so much everyone for joining us on a saturday evening and i wish you all the very best in your ux journey and building a presence as a like you know personal brand thank you so very much thank you so much rohan have a good rest of the day bye bye you too bye bye